Shall we start uh, today's Bible study by reading Acts chapter 2, verses 36 to 47. First, Pragesh Vaigan read in Hindi, and I will read it in English also. Ji, brother. Predito do uska chat, do ka chatis se 47. अतः अब इजराइल का सारा घराना निश्चित रूप से जान ले कि परमेश्वर ने उसी यीशु को जिसे तुमने क्रूस पर चढ़ाया प्रभु भी ठहराया और मसीह भी तब सुनने वालों के हृदय छिद गए और वे पत्रस और शेष प्रेरितों से पूछने लगे हे भाइयों हम क्या करें पत्रस ने उनसे कहा मन फिराओ और तुम में से हर एक अपने अपने पापों की क्षमा के लिए यीशु मसीह के नाम से बपतिस्मा ले तो तुम पवित्र आत्मा का दान पाओगे क्योंकि यह प्रतिज्ञा तुम और तुम्हारी संतानों और उन सब दूर दूर के देशों लोगों के लिए भी है जिनको प्रभु हमारा परमेश्वर अपने पास बुलाएगा उसने बहुत और भी बातों और आ, उसने बहुत और बातों से भी गवाही दे देकर समझाया कि अपने आप को इस टेढ़ी जाति से बचाओ अतः जिन्होंने उसका वचन ग्रहण किया उन्होंने बपतिस्मा लिया और उसी दिन तीन हजार मनुष्यों के लगभग उनमें मिल गए और वे प्रेरितों से शिक्षा पाने और संगति रखने और रोटी तोड़ने और प्रार्थना करने में लॉलीन रहे और सब लोगों पर भय छा गया और बहुत से अद्भुत काम और चिन्ह प्रेरितों के द्वारा प्रकट होते थे और सब विश्वास करने वाले इकट्ठे रहते थे और उनकी सब वस्तुएं साझे की थी वे अपनी अपनी संपत्ति और सामान बेच बेच कर जैसी जिसकी आवश्यकता होती थी बांट दिया करते थे वे प्रतिदिन एक मन होकर मंदिर में इकट्ठे होते और घर घर रोटी तोड़ते हुए आनंद और मन की सीधाई से भोजन किया करते थे और परमेश्वर की स्तुति करते थे और सब लोग उनसे प्रसन्न थे और जो उद्धार पाते थे उनको प्र, प्रभु प्रतिदिन उनमें मिला देते थे हमीन I'll read it in English also. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is to you and your children, to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. That day about the 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with a gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. This portion we see the conclusion of Peter's preaching and uh, the outcome of the preaching. First of all, we will uh, last week we have seen Peter's message. <coughs> what was so special about it? It was Christ-centered message. Christ was the theme of his message. He spoke about Christ. Christ's life, how God was pleased with it. Then uh, Christ's crucifixion, Christ's death. Then Christ's resurrection. Then uh, even his glorification. So 
he preach about christ so we go through the acts of the apostles see many of their preaching it was almost similar they preach christ so if you compare it with the modern gospel preachings very little about christ comes in those messages but here in the acts of the apostles or in the first century they preach christ Ashton, when uh, Peter was preaching in Cornelius' house, he preached almost the same points. Then Acts chapter 8, we read about uh, Philip preaching to the Ethiopian and uh, using the same text, he preached Christ to him. Then Acts chapter 11, verse 21 was the believers who were scattered from Jerusalem because of persecution, they went to Antioch and uh, they were preaching Jesus. So, Peter's preaching was uh, the content of the message was Christ. His uh, life, his death, then his burial, his resurrection, and uh, his glorification. All these things he mentioned. Then finally, when he was concluding, verse 36, Therefore let the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So the Christ you crucified, he is resurrected. Today God has made him the Lord and the Messiah, Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were cut in their heart and they asked Peter and other apostles, what should we do? So when they asked that question, Two things were there. We misunderstood Christ. We crucified Christ. We rejected Christ. And uh, now we understood who Christ is. This Jesus who preached among us who was seen three and a half years preaching the kingdom of God. Now we understand now we know our mistake also. We rejected him. We crucified him. Then what should we do now? That was the question. Then we see verse 38, Peter's answer. Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Here Peter did not say, be baptized for the forgiveness of sin, for the remission of sins. He did not say like that. First he said, repent. And repent was something for the last uh, three and a half years. Constantly heard in their midst. It started with uh, John the Baptist. Then his disciples. Then Jesus and his disciples preached this, repent, repent. So they knew what is repentance. What is repentance? Repentance has three meanings. Come back to God. Make a U-turn. Return to God. That is the first meaning. Second, feel sorry. Confess your sins. Third, willingness and readiness to be with the Lord the rest of his life. That is repentance. So then we heard this word repentance again and again. And 
then we uh, we Peter said be repent and be baptized see the rightful position or place of baptism it should be after repentance i just want to show you few verses matthew's gospel chapter 3 verse 6 John was baptizing people there. Then a lot of people were coming. Then he told them, each one confess your sins and then get baptized. So they confess their sins and then baptize. Or they repented and baptized. So that is the right order. If a child can repent, then you can baptize that child. An elderly person, he really repented of his sins, then he can be baptized. Only after conversion, repentance, a person should be baptized. Then Matthew's Gospel chapter 28, verse 19, the Lord Jesus is sending his disciples for world evangelism. And we see the Lord said, you go and make disciples of all nations. Go make disciples. Then he said, then baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who can be baptized? Only a disciple can be baptized. Then when we come to Acts chapter 8, there we read about the Ethiopian who has expressed his willingness after hearing the gospel. There we read, using Isaiah chapter 53, Philip preached to him the gospel. How a person can be saved through Jesus Christ. How Jesus brought solution to sin problem. So a person can be baptized. Then after hearing the gospel, this man volunteered himself he showed his willingness to be baptized. Then Philip said to him, if you believe with your heart, believe with all your heart, you can be baptized. So there again it is being emphasized. Only a person after hearing the gospel properly after then believing, he can be baptized. Then when we come to Acts chapter 18, verse 8, again, in Corinth, a lot of people heard the gospel, believed, and then baptized. So in all these places, what we see in other places also, Acts chapter 16, we read about uh, Lydia and the jailer, uh, after uh, believing in the Lord, they got baptized. We read there. But in all these places, first, repentance. Then people were baptized. So here is not uh, just, you know, baptism. Said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And uh, then, of course, uh, people will ask, uh, uh, you know, why the baptism is added with the remission of sins. See, when we get baptized, it is an outward expression of an inward experience. And we need to understand that. It is a public witness and public confession. And we declare to people that we have already decided to follow Jesus. So it is an outward expression of an inward experience. And unlike us, unlike other people in the world, Jewish people have committed some extra sin. What is that? They crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a sin. 
which the Jews committed and publicly in front of Pilate. When Pilate asked him, whom should I leave, Jesus or Barabbas? They said Barabbas. Then Pilate asked him, then what should I do with Jesus? And he replied, they replied, crucify him. They rejected him publicly. Now, for that sin, they have to get baptized in front of others, saying, we are freed, we join with Christ and we are freed from the sin which our nation collectively committed. That is what, uh, in this context, we need to understand. Let me understand uh, the by faith alone is salvation. That is the collective teaching of the word of God. We cannot take one isolated verse and establish a doctrine. What is the collective teaching of the word of God? We have a lot of verses in the Bible. See in Acts chapter 3, 19, when Peter was again preaching, what did he say? Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Here he did not say baptism. Here he said, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Then uh, 16, 19, we know very well. When in the Philippian jail, the jailer asked uh, Paul this question, what should I do to be saved? The answer, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That was the answer. Then Acts chapter 8 was 37. When Ethiopian asked for baptism, Paul said, if you believe with all your heart, sorry, Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you can be baptized. And then in uh, many other verses, we can see in the word of God, salvation or eternal life, forgiveness of sin, becoming a child of God, all by faith. Only by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Accepting him as our Savior and Lord. When a person confesses sin and accepts Christ, his sins are forgiven and he is getting saved. He is saved by the Lord. So, here uh, Peter said, uh, you have to get, uh, you have to repent and then get, get baptized. Then what do we see here? That day, 3,000 people got saved. And afterwards, we read, you know, chapter 4, verse 4, 5,000 people got saved. And 5.14, a multitude believed. And 6.7 again, innumerable people believed. So, in the initial stage of the church, the growth was so fast and uh, people got saved. Here in the first message of Peter, 3,000 people got saved. Is it because Peter's preaching was very powerful? Of course, it was powerful. He, the best way he could, he presented Christ. That is there. But on the other side, we need to know during this past three and a half years, the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, his ministry of uh, three and a half years, miracles, and uh, his teaching and preaching, that cannot go in vain. And uh, the apostles could reap what Jesus has sown. In uh, John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 30, 38, Jesus said, 
somebody has sown and you reap somebody someone sows another person reaps yes 3 and 1/2 years jesus and his disciples were sowing and here they could reap what jesus has sown not only here in the subsequent uh, events also great number of people believed all what they had to be known to be convinced that jesus is the messiah and when jesus lived here and uh, we know at the time of feeding 5000 people uh, feeding uh, people with uh, five loaves and two fish there were minimum some 25000 people were there and uh, to a great extent uh, they understood uh, few things about christ but somehow they all did not come out publicly and converse christ and probably people who ben- were benefited by the miracles of christ and uh, all those people the one thing we need to be sure god's word will not go in vain you sow the seed some day it will bring the fruit probably somebody might have sown the seed another man is reaping in many cases it is like that somebody else shared the gospel and uh, but then and there that person did not accept the lord but after some time he contacted another person then uh, he shared the gospel again that led that person to the lord it happens so something similar happened here so let us be very sure our labor will not go in vain that is what you know paul said in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 you know that our labor in the lord is not in vain we are given a tract we have given a gospel portion we have given a book to a person we shared the gospel with the real burden and uh, desire so that that person may know christ accept him as his savior probably immediately it did not happen but be sure one day it will happen probably i mentioned about my experience a person shared the gospel with me i didn't understand everything that time but you know it took almost 10 days for me to understand and i didn't meet that person afterwards and on the 10th day i accepted christ as my savior when we reach heaven i'll meet that person then he will be so happy and he will be thrilled to know that that day the what he shared with me has resulted in my salvation even though it is not immediately so that is uh, very important so here on the day of pentecost what happened verse 41 we read 3000 souls were saved after was 5000 people another meeting another meeting so many people believed in the lord innumerable people believed in the lord so the growth of the church became very fast in the beginning of the church now why it was because three and a half years jesus labored day and night he taught people preached to people do miracles and signs he showed to them that he is the messiah he is the savior of the world but an appropriate time came they all believed in the lord jesus christ and the church started growing very fast now we will go to verses 40 41 and 42 here uh, seven basic truths seven important truths 
of Christian life is seen. And I want all of you to understand this properly. So Paul, when, sorry, Peter, when he was concluding his advice to them, verse 40, he told them, be saved from this perverse generation. Be saved. So the word saves, save comes here in this chapter three times. 21, we read, verse 21, we read that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. A man who calls on the Lord means just pray like this, Lord, I am a sinner, I want you. Save me. That's all a person has to do. Then uh, verse 47, again that word, uh, save comes. The Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. So what is salvation? So Jesus is the Savior. He came to save. So what is salvation? Salvation is deliverance from danger. Man, because of his sin, he is going to eternal destruction, hell. He has to spend his eternity, life after death. In eternal hell, and Jesus came to deliver him, save him from that eternal punishment, eternal destruction, eternal hell. That is salvation in the Bible. So, Peter said, verse 14, be saved from this perverse generation. Then what happened? Verse 41, we see three things. Those who gladly received his word. So when he said, be saved, people were happy, glad. I want to be saved. Everyone started saying happily without anybody, anybody forcing any compulsion. People volunteered, happily accepted the Lord. So that means they got saved. So the most important thing in a person's life is salvation experience. We need to know there is a day in my life after hearing the gospel, I accepted Christ as my savior. He is my savior. I belong to him. Christ has saved me from eternal hell. One day when this life is over, I can go to heaven. That is salvation. Okay, the first thing, they got saved. Second, those who gladly received his word were baptized. So, who is baptized? Those who gladly received his word. We have seen elsewhere, in other portions of scripture, people who repented were baptized. People who believed in the Lord were baptized. People who became the disciples of Christ were baptized. And the Bible is very clear, very, very clear. Baptism is for those who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say three, four things about baptism. Then you will understand the rightful place of baptism. Yes, Uddar paane ke liye nahi, uddar paaye hoonge liye. Paap ka shama ke liye nahi, paap ka shama paaye hoonge liye. Ishwar ka ek balak banne ke liye nahi, Ishwar ka balak ban gaye hoonge liye. I hope you understood. I will translate, I will say in English also. It is not for going to heaven, but it is for those who will go to heaven. Those who are on the way to heaven, those who receive Christ for them. Secondly, it is not for the forgiveness of sins. It is for those who receive the forgiveness of sins. It is not for salvation. It is for those who already received salvation. It is not to become a child of God. It is for those who became a child of God. So the order you should not change. Very often when I explain, you know, baptism to people, I say, see, by putting on a, a uniform will not make a person a policeman. 
But a person joined in the uh, police uh, force and became a policeman, he needs the uniform. Uniform is not going to make a person a policeman. A recognition will be there. But uh, he is recruited to the police force. So he is a policeman. If he became a policeman, it is expected of him to put on the uniform. So that much is the difference you need to understand. So many people think that, you know, baptism can take people to heaven. Don't misunderstand this. And the thief on the cross, and understand, he got saved from the wrong place. There was no worse place than being on the cross. But in the last moments of his life, he understood the person who is dying next to him, who is crucified in the middle cross, he is not like him, not like them. So he said, Lord Jesus, when you return in your kingdom, remember me. What was the reply Jesus gave? Today, today, you shall be with me in the paradise. The salvation is instant. It can be obtained from anywhere. And it is available to all people. However, words a person is. We may reject a person. God will not. And God was ready. Jesus was ready to save him. From that cross in the last moments of his life. So he is not baptized. And you know, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we read, uh, Paul said, the Lord has sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. What, is, what does he indicate? Preaching the gospel and a person getting saved is much more important than baptizing people. If anybody is doing or baptizing people without salvation experience, that person is guilty in the presence of God. So Paul said, the Lord has sent me to preach the gospel, not to baptize. That doesn't mean the, he did not teach about baptism. He did not baptize people. He baptized people. But first, he wanted to make it very, very sure that this person accepted the Lord. So that is important. That is baptism. So second thing is baptism. Third, verse 41, that day about 3,000 souls were added to them or separated. Read verse 44. And now all who believed were together. So they were separated from other unbelieving people. Those who believed were together. Those who, were, uh, those who did not believe, they were together. And uh, they got separated from the unbelieving world. So the moment a person accepts Christ and he separates himself from all the unbelieving people, however dear and near they are to him, he separates. So the third important word is separation. These three things can never be repeated in a person's life. This is a one-time experience. This is once and for all. It cannot be repeated. What are the three things? Salvation, baptism, and separation. These three things cannot be repeated. Then in verse 42, listen very carefully. Another four things. These are things they did continuously. This can be repeated. This will be done again and again. We will do it. And they did it and we have to do it. Every child of God has to do it. What are the four things? Verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. What is that? The word of God. That time the New Testament was not written. And what they taught the people is being recorded here today in the written form. 
So there, here we have the apostles' doctrine. When the Bible was not, no testament was not written, and uh, instantly God gave the word to his apostles, they taught the people. So the word of God, that is one thing. Second, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. What is fellowship? Being together with the people of God. Being encouraged by the people of God. And uh, that is the second thing. Fellowshipping with the uh, believers. Third, the breaking of bread. What is that? Speaks about the sacrifice of Christ. What Christ ultimately did for us, Christ gave his body, Christ gave his blood for us, Christ sacrificed himself for us. That is the third thing, breaking of bread. Fourth, prayers. Prayers is getting into the program of God. You get involved in the plan and purposes and the the work of God, the program of God. So the, these four things, just like the four walls of a house. And uh, we all know that all the houses where we live, our houses have four walls. And uh, four walls of the house make our life secure inside. So God in his wisdom gave us these four walls for the security of our uh, Christian life, for the progress of Christian life. We are secured inside, within these four walls. What are the four walls? One side, the word of God. Second side, the people of God. Third, the sacrifice of God, the, what Jesus did for us. Fourth, the program of God, what God is doing in this world, we become part of it. So we pray to God regarding his work and his program. Then we can say that these four things, uh, our four love, four love, love for the word of God, Love for the people of God. Love for the sacrifice Christ. Christ sacrifice. Then love for the work of God which is happening in the world. So, these four things, they uh, continued steadfastly. It was not a one-time experience just like the three things we have seen earlier. Salvation, baptism, separation. What is mentioned in 41? It happens only once. But the verse, what is mentioned in verse 42? These four things, it continued. They were practicing it, continuing it. So that is uh, important. And praise God, even in this 21st century, there are people, there are people, there are groups which follow these truths as it is. How can we know a New Testament church? How can we say that this church is according to the Bible? You walk into a church, let, uh, let its name be anything. Let's, let it, uh, its uh, word be anything. Probably they might have kept a board, you know, saying, you know, Roman Catholic. But if you go inside, you see these seven things in its order there. Salvation, baptism, separation, then uh, teaching of the word of God, fellowship of the people of God, then uh, worshipping Lord with breaking bread, then uh, prayers. If all these seven things are seen in order, you can be in that church. 
but you know somebody else may claim that you know we are the real biblical church but if you go inside you may not see this seven things there don't go there so before you join a church if you are looking for a biblical church if you are looking for a church patterned after the new testament principles here are the seven principles what this church is teaching about salvation and what do they teach about baptism what do they teach about separation how they teach the people the word of god how the people of god encourage each other pray for one another help each other that is fellowship pray for one another support one another encourage one another teach one another exhort one another you can see lot of one another in the word of god that is real fellowship that is real fellowship then the third one is the breaking of bread no i mentioned it last sunday when we read deuteronomy chapter 12 their god has commanded his people how they should come for worship first of all they have to find out the right place second they have to come with sacrifices types and uh, thirdly they have to come with the family and their sons and daughters even their servants all should be brought and they should praise god they should thank god and a lot of instruction is there in chapter 12 so they had to bring sacrifices they had to bring animals and sacrifice them first then worship god praise god in the new testament jesus became our sacrifice no more sacrifice now jesus is sacrifice there for each one of us but every sunday when we come together we come with sacrifice what sacrifice sacrifice of calvary sacrifice of christ we come with the with the sacrifice lamb and we exalt christ together than worship so breaking of bread is important jesus instituted this breaking of bread for his remembrance he said do this for the remembrance of me you know very very simple things christ gave ordinary bread and ordinary wine these two things jesus picked up and said this bread represent my body this wine represent my blood you participate on this and do this for the remembrance of me. so that is a uh, uh, they were coming together for worship then prayers as and you know we become part of god's program in this world god is doing a great work in this world for the last 2000 years now what did jesus say to his disciples you go all over the world go to every people every nation and teach them preach them that is what jesus said then i asked after one verse eight the key was in the book of acts that is when the holy spirit shall come upon you you shall receive power and you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the world praise god jesus came for all he is the savior of all he should be preached to all people and jesus died for all Jesus wants to save all people. So there is a message for all people. So that is the program of God. So when we become part of Christ's work in this world, we have to pray. We have to ask Him what to do, what not to do, how to do this, and we get into the program of God. and we start talking to god about his work 
what are the hindrances what are the problem what are the challenges we tell him we are part of his program so as i conclude here how to identify a scriptural new testament church when you see this seven basic truths are followed in its order maybe a small group of believers no problem but be sure that is the right place for you to join and if you are a part of any group now just see that whether all these things are there in its order followed that you have to check it otherwise you have to look for a no place where believers are gathering they strictly follow this seven basic truths which are given in the word of god then uh, we see verse uh, 45 and uh, great giving these new believers they were very new but what did they do they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as they had need and uh, you need to know when jesus was leaving this world he did not give them any money for their expenses no just like uh, the the children of israel when they were delivered and started their journey from egypt to the land of canaan they didn't know that this is such a long journey and uh, they will be in the desert for such a long time they didn't know but you know the lord who delivered them new 40 years he provided manna for them he gave water from the rock 40 years until they reached the land of canaan god cared for them the same way here jesus christ uh, gave a great commission to this disciples you go all over the world and preach the gospel it's a very expensive one they need lot of money from where the money will come they had no idea these disciples had no idea jesus had idea jesus knew how it is going to work out then what happened not only this time after us also believers started selling their property and giving the money for the lord and uh, even today there are believers i know who gave their property for the work of god for uh, some other mission in kerala right in the in the place where i uh, i come from there one person gave two acres of land for uh, for a nursing college for the hospital which is ours we run a hospital there and they had to start a new uh, post graduation nursing college so they needed a land and a person said okay i have two acres of land here you take it and use it for god's glory so there are people today also and if you think about many churches in many places the land was donated by somebody it is not uh, uh, they didn't have to buy the land a believer gave that land okay i am ready to give this much land for constructing a church hall assembly hall so that god's people can gather together without difficulty so there are people like that they exercise themselves so great exercise and great giving was there so from there i want to say an encouraging word when after trusting in the lord jesus christ we do may not know what how we have to go ahead how to progress we may not know we do not know what are the needs and problems there on our uh, journey but i want to assure all of us all of you from experience how god takes care of our future just like these disciples future paid in their money 
they all left their job and came as full time workers they didn't have money then many believers came they were in a financial problem but suddenly some people said you know we got lot of land here and we will do like this we will sell this and give the money for god's work and god has taken care of them their needs were met the same way god will take care of us that's a great and just like the israelites were taken care of in the wilderness they never thought they are going to face lot of problems in the desert but god knew and god knew how to take care of them god had enough provisions to take care of them just like these disciples were taken care of now god has 101 ways or 1001 ways to take care of his people how god is going to take care of us is amazing so wonderful so the disciples needs were met so we are we see in the beginning of the church how god ordered things how these disciples the number increase and uh, how the church was formed and what were the wonderful truths which is found with them and uh, how a notasman church can be identified even today on the basis of this was so i'll close here once again i'll remind you by was 41 and 42 this seven fundamental truths don't forget this seven fundamental truths which will help you to identify a new testament scriptural church salvation baptism separation it is a one time experience then 42 onwards or in 42 apostles doctrine god's word then fellowship god's people breaking of bread sacrifice of christ then prayers god's involving in god's program may the lord bless these words and uh, be encouraged if god has taken care of these people in the first century the same god will take care of each one of us may his name be glorified